Hi folks, Ben from ultrabooknews.com. Today I'm going to play a little Black Mesa on the Asus UX31e Ultrabook. If you haven't heard about it, Black Mesa is a complete remake of the original Half-Life. Uh, it's built completely in the Source engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the game and we're going to start with the highest settings and we're going to work our way back down to find where the optimal level is for uh, playability on the UX31e with HD3000 graphics. Uh, HD 4000 devices based on Ivy Bridge will run a little bit better, um, but this is this will give you an idea of what you could expect out of HD 3000 in an Ultrabook for gaming. Let's get started. All right, so if you want to follow along, here's what we're going to do. Start off by going into Options, to the Keyboard tab, and then the Advanced button, and check off this box that says Enable Developer Console. Then hit OK. And now we're going to use the tilde key, which is to the left of the 1 on most keyboards. And we're going to type CL underscore, I'm sorry, CL underscore show FPS space 1, and then hit enter. And now you probably won't be able to see it uh, on the video, but up here I can now see uh, my frames per second. Uh, so that's going to help me decide how I'm going to uh, best configure this and what my optimal performance is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cranking everything all the way up. And it's not going to run that great, but we're going to basically experiment until we get the optimal settings. I'm going to apply that and it'll take just a second. Okay, so I can see my frames per second up there already is around, uh, it's not passing 20, it's about between 15 and 20. Um, so not, not bad, um, but it doesn't feel very good to play. I wouldn't want to play a whole game like this. Uh, it goes down, you know, as you run around a little bit more and get into some more complicated scenes. So we definitely want to get it higher than between 15 and 20. 30 is our goal, because uh, that'll look smooth but still allow you to retain some detail. So um, the big things, that there's two big things for graphics card that, that really hit them hard. Um, Anti-aliasing does, it requires a lot of work from the graphics card and the resolution does as well. So you've got two options basically. You can turn the resolution down and crank the anti-aliasing up or you can turn the anti-aliasing off and turn the resolution up. Um, on HD 3000 like this, and probably HD 4000 too, you, if you want really smooth gameplay, you sort of have to choose between one or the other. Um, and I may as well say, anti-aliasing uh, basically applies advanced processing to the edges of objects to make them so they aren't uh, jagged. It tries to smooth them out. Um, and it does make it look better, but it can have a pretty intense effect on the performance. So anyway, with everything all the way up, um, you know, we're we're looking pretty good actually for uh, a slim ultrabook here between 15, 20, occasionally 20, 22. Um, but we just want to get it up a little bit higher higher than this because the controls feel a bit iffy. Uh, you can see as I move the menu around here, it's not even following my mouse. Uh, so we want to get all that fixed up. So what I'm going to do is crank everything all the way down. So we're going to see the other extreme how fast it can run everything. And even the resolution. So here we are with everything turned all the way down and we're seeing pretty easily over, uh, it's between 29 and 30 frames per second, uh, sometimes going up to 40, but it's quite smooth right now, but I have everything turned down so low that you know, the models <laughs> look pretty bad there. Uh, the textures are really low resolution. So we're going to want to fix that. And I'm going to run back to my scene here so we have a direct comparison. So um, what I'm going to recommend is that we start by turning up the resolution and seeing how it changes. Resolution is pretty important in sort of fitting. You want to have the native resolution to fit your screen uh, so that everything is as sharp as it should be. So for this particular monitor, um, it's the aspect ratio down here is 1610, and it's 1440 by 900. So I'm going to set it there. 
If you're on an Ultrabook, uh, chances are you've got a widescreen 16:9 uh, aspect ratio here, so you got to set that first, and you're probably looking at 13:66 by 7:68. Um, my the the UX 21e and 31e, I believe, are both 1600 by 900, um, but many of the other Ultrabooks are 13:66 by 7:68, and some are even uh, 1080, but all of them should be 16:9. So uh, make sure you set it to your native resolution. So I'm going to go 1440 by 900 here. And we'll see how this plays. Still quite smooth, still around 30 frames per second. Uh, we're getting a couple, couple bumps as it loads in textures and stuff, but the more I run around, once everything's loaded, it's quite smooth, right up there around 30 frames per second. Now, as I mentioned, uh, anti-aliasing is really the other the other big hitter. So I just want to see I just want to show you what it looks like when I turn on uh, four times anti-aliasing. It's actually not too bad, but it's still coming down under thirty. Um, and it's yeah, it's bumping again as textures are loading. It's probably about five frames per second slower than before. It doesn't feel quite as smooth as we're running around. But let's see what we can do. Maybe we can keep it there with anti-aliasing. Um, so the good thing is most of the model detail, texture detail, shader detail, um, HD3000 handles this stuff all pretty much no problem. So you can crank this all the way up and it shouldn't have a huge impact on performance. So we're back now and it feels just about as smooth as a second ago um, with anti-aliasing on, but now the textures are much sharper. You can see the models are much more detailed and everything uh, is just quite a bit more sharp. It looks way better, reflections on all that good stuff and it's still running quite nice so maybe we actually can keep the anti-aliasing on see what happens when we turn up our filtering to anastropic 16 times so that is also not having too bad of an impact probably eh, no, it's running pretty well might have dropped us another three four maybe five frames per second um, let's see if we can keep the high anastropic filtering by turning down our anti-aliasing from four times to two times. Alright, that feels a little bit better. We just got those five frames per second back. And as you can see, it's running quite smoothly, except for when it loads in uh, textures like that. So running pretty nice here. This is definitely playable. Um, we're over 30 frames per second most of the time. Let's run back to our test perspective here. And let's see what happens when we turn high dynamic range on. So here we are now with high dynamic range on, and we've probably lost five frames per second to that, um, which I'm, I don't think is a great trade-off for HDR. Um, still running fairly well, but I would rather, we're at about 25 frames per second, I'd rather keep it up above 30 for that smooth feeling. So let's get HDR off. Okay, so I opted to set HDR to Bloom, um, which is right here. It's the middle option, and I think we reclaimed some of those lost frames. Uh, motion blur can turn on. Let's see what happens when we disable vertical sync.
vertical, turning off vertical sync didn't help us very much, so I'm going to recommend we keep it on. Um, what that does is it makes sure that the frames uh, are, basically the computer renders the frame over a certain amount of time. Uh, when you ask it to wait for vertical sync, it makes sure that from one frame to the next, um, you don't get any uh, jagged lines across, up and down, which can be kind of annoying when you're turning quickly. And turning it off didn't really help our performance, so we'll keep that on to make sure we don't get any of those lines. So here we go, we've got two times... We've got full resolution, two times anti-aliasing, 16 times anastropic uh, filtering, vertical sync on, color correction enabled, shadow detail medium, um, uh, water detail reflect all, model detail high, texture detail very high, shader detail high, motion blur enabled, and high dynamic uh, range set to bloom. And let's take it for a test drive, see how it plays. Uh, with some of these more complicated rooms, it's coming down under 30. So I'm going to go back and turn down my anti-aliasing, see if we can keep it above 30. There we go, we're back up to 30 where we want to be. Just got to load in some of these textures, so it's a little bumpy. Yeah, this is right about where we want to be. We got full resolution, no anti-aliasing, but we've got a solid 30 frames per second. Um, high resolution textures, high detail models. It's looking pretty good. So now if you're interested, we'll just take this game for a spin and see how it runs. I hope this video helped. For more, check us out at ultrabooknews.com. Thanks.